We have so many stories to cover from YouTube phishing attempts to French encryption bans. I'm Ali Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. This is just a PSA for YouTube creators, really any YouTube enjoyer in general, who may tumble into this channel. AI video is now being used to try to get into your channels. YouTube released a formal announcement on the Help Community page explaining that cyber criminals are using AI-generated videos of the CEO, Neil Mohan, as a way to convince creators to give up their passwords. The AI-generated videos show Mohan talking about changes in platform monetization, something large YouTubers will definitely be worried about. And will click links about. The links will take them to a phishing page that will ask you to, quote, confirm the updated YouTube partner program terms to continue monetizing your content and accessing all your features. And to do that, you must log in. If you do receive a concerning email and are worried about it maybe being a phishing email, instead of clicking links embedded in the email, go to the platform directly and navigate manually to the place they ask you to check. That way you can be 100% sure it's an authentic email and login experience. On February 26th, Red Hat announced that they were named a CNA of last resort. Red Hat was first appointed as a CNA or CVE naming authority in 2002. Being named a CNA gives that group the ability to assign CVE numbers and publish CVE information about vulnerabilities related to their coverage scope. Right now, there are 445 CNAs, if you didn't know. In 2022, Red Hat was elevated to be a CNA root, meaning that they were responsible for the recruitment, training, and governance of entities of CNAs. Now, being named a CNE of last resort, they've essentially been given power to supersede another CNA's decision to hold off on publishing a CVE. A CNA authorized by a root to assign CVE IDs and to publish corresponding CVE records within that root scope. So you could say Red Hat was given pseudo powers for the CVE system. Listen, I can imagine how you feel. A legitimate source using an exploit to achieve their goals, the double standard of it all. And Google recently patched several zero days to prevent this from happening. Specifically, Google released an Android patch to fix three bugs used by authorities to unlock Android phones using forensic tools. This patch covered three vulnerabilities that were used by digital forensics company Celebrite to unlock Android phones. The connection was discovered by Amnesty International, who found that these zero days were used to unlock the phone of a student protester in Serbia and suggested that the Serbian Security Information Agency has had a history of using zero days to unlock phones using Celebrite's technology. This situation reminds me of something that happened to a friend of the channel, Tiberius. Tiberius, who also makes cybersecurity content here on YouTube, was recently trying to transfer his Windows 10's license to a Windows 11's license. After hours on the phone with Microsoft support and multiple help desk transfers, he was transferred to a help desk assistant who ended up running an open source Windows Activator hacking script. Yes, the legit Microsoft help desk used a hacker tool to unlock the new edition, which is just wild. Microsoft finally admitted that sometimes GitHub does have bad stuff hosted on it. In a new blog post shared by the Microsoft Threat Intelligence Group, Microsoft walks through a new malvertising campaign that used GitHub as the main payload delivery site. They estimated that this hack started as early as December of 2024 and has impacted almost 1 million devices. So the attackers were working with quite the operation, but that's also because the attack starting point was illegal streaming sites with iframe redirects. The iframes would lead to GitHub repos with hosted payloads. Once downloaded, the files would collect relevant information on the system and send it off as a base64 encoded URL. The malicious activity would continue, but not in a very repeatable or predictable way. Sometimes it would download malware, sometimes it would exfiltrate data via the Luma payload. It really seems like the third and fourth stages of the attack would be tailored depending on the information that was collected in the second stages of the attack. Given the range of the attack, 
Microsoft has written up a plethora of remediations for this attack for whatever Microsoft product you may use. The write-up is linked down below for you to review. In the February 24th episode of ThreatWire, we covered that the UK demanded that Apple create a backdoor or a way to access encrypted data on iCloud. In response, Apple removed the end-to-end -end encryption features of iCloud for UK users. Following in the footsteps of the UK, France has now proposed a law to require tech companies to comply with requests for unencrypted information. The bill is titled, and I apologize for my inability to pronounce French, Vissant à sortir la France du pillage du narcotrafic, which translates to aiming to get France out of drug trafficking. The new law will require companies to hand over decrypted messages, emails, and chats within 72 hours of requests. Failure to comply will lead to 1.5 million euros in fines. It will also allow for using spyware to do remote device surveillance. While following a similar vein to the UK, there's a big difference between how this is being done. The UK request for removal of end-to-end -end encryption still has not been confirmed. The Home Office, or the UK Interior Ministry, has refused to confirm if the notice to Apple is true. Can we confirm this is actually happening though? What we do know, in news broken by the Financial Times, is that Apple is said to have filed a legal complaint against the UK's demand for an iCloud encryption break. The UK request is happening behind closed doors, while France's is happening quite publicly. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. Will Apple win? Thank you so much for watching Threat Warrior for the week of March 10th, 2025. If you enjoy this show and want to support us, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. By the way, DEF CON convos are starting again. Who's going and what are you looking forward to? As a reminder, this DEF CON celebrates 20 years of Hack 5. So speaking of birthdays, it was recently my birthday. So to whoever keeps commenting in the comments, happy birthday, Ali, you may have actually gotten it right one of these days. But let me know if you're gonna be at DEF CON or celebrating the 20th anniversary of Hack 5 in the comments down below. If you wanna find me online, I'm at Ending with Ali on everything, including Minecraft and Instagram. So thank you so much for watching, and as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.